I gave him my, my BB King over there to play in there. What does a kid do, man? He plays a song, that first song I wrote when I was 16. Get that. Wow. Really? Man, I was just blown away. Where's my band? No, that was before I wrote that. Okay. But the first, what I, what I considered when going with Stu, that's yeah. when I went with Stu, by the way. 16. I, now I know. It, it's, uh, 16? Because uh, he's the one to make sure that I refine that tune with the, with the changes. Yeah. And, and I made sure that I could tell somebody else what the keys were because I didn't know the names, you know? Sure. But for Pedro Show, uh, you just heard Infinity, Infinity, Infinity by the Sunburn Hand of the Man. I think they're Western Massachusetts. Okay. And before that, we had some live Cretans from uh, Fillmore West, 1970, Fortunate Son. I think I can play some guitar. Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. And you know he's still playing? In fact, his road manager is a Pedro dude. Really? Yeah, what's his name? Uh, uh, Leo, Leo Rossi. That's it. Wow, man. That's it. And ahead um, of that, we had Fly to the Paintbrushes by Ott. That's Chris Groger in Austin, Texas, another Texan man. And then Mountain by John Wayne, bro. Uh, so what you had to do was uh, do your apprenticeship, get in the uh, iron workers. Yeah. But you're still doing music. Yeah. Ah. Uh, you know what? You know what happened then? I turned into two people. Okay. I did, I had oh to, yeah, like Franz had, Kafka, the two desks. I had, I had to. Yeah. Or else, and, and then plus you have to get double the energy. Yeah, right. If you don't have double the energy, one's not going to happen. Sure, sure. And, and and you also have to have double the faith and belief. So music man, nighttime, daytime Iron Man. Yeah. So what the newspaper wrote? Iron worker by day, blues man by night. But uh, now, when you were doing these uh, Devil Kitchen gigs, this is you solo. So no band. Yeah, at first. Okay. At first, at first. Then you start putting together band of what? Pedro guys, South Bay guys. Pedro, Pedro guys. Yeah, Pedro guys. Okay. Yeah, with Jimmy Solo. Jimmy Solo, piano man. Yeah. yeah it my, my, my biker buddy of mine down here took me to see somebody. Yeah. That has had a studio. And it was always there, and I didn't have any gear. And he goes, ah, you can't just do nothing. I'll take you to a place where I guarantee you he'll record you, or else I'll break his arm. <laughs> Those yeah. <laughs> yeah. I told you, man, I hang out with that crew. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, don't piss Shane off. So <laughs> well, maybe he really wanted to record you. I don't know. He didn't know me. <laughs> he didn't know me. Because he had no choice. When he, when, he, when we walked in there, that's what Bob said. I'm a big Bob. His name is Big Bob, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Jimmy had guitars like this. Matter of fact, that stand, that little holder, comes from him. Okay. And uh, when I took the guitar off the wall, I took the holder eventually, too. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, he just goes like this. He leans backwards and he's still at his mixer and he's got his keyboard there. And he, leans back, he points to the wall. He goes, pick up that. And I didn't know what he was talking about because he wouldn't give me the time of day for the first 10 minutes I was in there. And then all of a sudden he's just pointing, 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 you know. Okay, he picks it up and I pick it up and play something. Come on, let me hear you. <laughs> wow. And then I wrote a song about Bessie Peterson from Walker's Cafe. Yeah. Right wow. then and there. I called that Made in the Shade. Cool. Yeah, Way cool. <laughs> Where was this studio? It was uh, it was on Shepherd Street. In Pedro. Yeah. Shepherd, yeah, by the water. Yeah. It was perfect, man. Perfect. I just it was yeah, it's right by Walkers. Right by Walkers. There's a lot of hidden yeah, right, not far from water. Yeah. A lot of hidden it's stuff in Pedro. There is. There's there's more hidden know. stuff than I think that we even know of because well, like, I didn't know there was a studio down there. Well it was pretty yeah. private, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Although there was some people that went in there, they were cool. Danny Tim's man, he plays everywhere, mm -hmm. like you, you know, he plays everywhere. We're all sure. these good guys, you know. And uh, he went in there and he joined me on that track. He just from a call that Jimmy made that night. Wow. Yeah. That was your first time recording, Pedro. As yes, studio. it was. Okay. Yeah. That was a that was a start of something. That was start of phase two in life. Yeah. Phase two in Shane's life. Yeah. First phase is all the way up going through that, all through that education, all that learning, all that maturity, and then phase two started then. This is phase three right here today. Right. Just so you know. It's definable. Right. I'm phase telling you the three. truth. Wow. Yeah. 
So phase two, uh, just, to, just to continue with the story, yeah, 24 albums. Right, there's 20 of them right there. From phase two to phase three, yeah. There's 20 of them right there. And right up there. looking at the, the jungle floor. here, <laughs> you don't have to go into people's studios anymore. You do it here, right? Jimmy set me up after that with some beer right away. Okay, okay. As soon as he admits it the next so day. So another apprenticeship. Now this and then the studio apprenticeship. apprenticeship. Yeah, you're right, you're exactly right. Yeah. Uh, Matter of fact, the recorder is right there. I still keep it. It's a four-track uh, test game. Okay. I got a milk crate of masters. From that milk crate, a lot of original ideas I had. Yeah. I, I pillaged from it, and I made this three one these solid gold treasure chests. Sure. I call it just a, it's a trilogy thing. Uh -huh. It's got 32 songs written from the day I quit the Disney concert hall to come to my boat to work on the studio that Jimmy. Yeah, we gotta it. tell people about that. It's awesome. Uh, you listeners there, uh, I got to play with Shane at the Disney concert hall. Was it 2006? 2006, March. March. It was uh, Mr. Glenn Branca's uh, Symphony Number no. 13, Hallucinatious City. He uh, came to town, uh, ended up with 64 guitars, 20 basses, one drummer. Awesome. And at the Disney three, concert hall. Disney concert hall. <laughs> we did three days of heavy practice. Oh God! Oof. Okay, because this was a piece. I bet you never did that. We read the music and all this. Mike, it was pretty wild. Mike, you, the gig came to me through you. I did not know yeah. how to read music. Well, Glenn, uh, <laughs> Glenn uh, wanted to reach out and get people on board, so I put the word out. How awesome! It was most, It is the most premier favorite memory I have. Period. Bar none. Just the whole experience. Yeah, cause, cause I didn't I know how it. to read, and those, all those cats in that group. Oh yeah, I know. They, they all went to college and stuff. A lot of them did. Come on now. Shit, yeah. They were, Shit, were yeah. smart guys. In the school of life, like uh, Nels Klein. Now I remember him being there. Yeah, totally. He was there, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, it was, you know, I got sick on the last day of the prac. I had to do the gig in a fever. I didn't know that. Yeah, but there's no way I was staying home. I did that thing in a total fever. Remember how they wouldn't let anybody take pictures or cameras yeah. in there? Yeah. Well, I, went, I had a, a couple of my crew go down there, and uh, some little chick ain't going to tell these guys not to take any pictures. It ain't going to happen. And I got some <laughs> pictures of us. I did pictures of both of us that were, were oh, wow. the ovation, you know? You had your plaid red shirt on. I had a red flannel and, on, I remember. I had my red, white, and blue. Uh, I think it's right here. Oh, I, oh, yeah, there you are. Shit, that's it. Well, you guys got the same mustaches. <laughs> Yeah, because I remember there was a room in the back. I think that's after we're done. That's right. Yeah. Hey, did you remember what I did at that at the Journey of Oz? Did you catch that? Because the bases were, you know, there's so many people in the orchestra. You're like way back there. I was by, right next to the drummer. Uh, but I was right in front of You guys John. were in sections of fives out front. Uh, I was the one row back in front of John. Yeah. Our conductor. Yeah, yeah, John Meyer. Uh, and I was one row, one seat away from the center aisle that takes you right to him. Yeah. So, well, I was kind of in the center too because I was right next to Virgil. I was right But I was way behind you guys. We were up in the ba back with him. I don't know if you can imagine this, but uh, stealth mode. Just remember the, remember this term for the moment. Stealth yeah. mode. Stealth mode. Yeah. Well, as an iron worker, yeah. especially working at the concert hall, yeah. and then playing with the band that's in the sold out show. You helped build hall. this band. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's one of the most weirdest buildings you, in the whole wide world that's right. ever been built on iron, that's for sure. Right. And, uh, Frank Gary. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and so, imagine the iron worker now. You got to know that I had to say to the iron workers that were there, that hey, there's an iron worker in the crew here, yeah. in the band. Right, <laughs> right, right. So I brought my my Carhartt jacket with the. It's got a great Mad Max in it. Yeah, a sure. A great big logo on the back. So I put it on the back of the chair, and uh, I remember I wore my safety glasses and I put my 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 flag shirt, my red, white, and blue. So I'm yeah. so proud of. <laughs> and uh, and I don't know how to read, so I bluffed the whole thing, the whole gig. That's for sure. And so when the guy beside me was flipping his pages. I would take my page and I'd just flip it and I'd fling it in the air like a cartoon, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got the glasses. Nobody could see that I was looking like I think that. <laughs> and I did that to like all 50 of those pages. It was trippy guitar too, which oh, had yeah. like what? Three B, uh, E strings? Oh man, I think we had three E strings and, a, and a, there was only two different kinds of strings on our alto ones. <laughs> wow. Only man. two different kinds. And different were, groups had different strings. Uh, us bass guys were the tuning was all the same. Guys, yeah. The tuning was all the same. 
Yeah. Well, alternative tunings are a bitch. No, 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 no. I mean, all the strings were the same. Piece, you know, it was for his piece. What, what? All the strings were the same tuning, no matter if there was a B or an E. It oh, would all be tuning. E tuning. It would all. Yeah, like a slide tuning. It would all sound like that. No, 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 no. They all had that tone, that contra pitch. Really? Like, uh, an E, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Was, and tell you what, it's the most coolest experience a musician could ever go through. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was absolutely. Check that out on YouTube or something. No, it's uh, not there. No, it ain't. There's no, there was no like, recordings of me. Harsh, I've, got, I've, uh, I've talked and in a way, I don't know how they could have because the sound was from so many places. Where would you put the mics? Outside or you something. Know, if you think about it, Mike, I don't yeah. know where it was. It's funny to be able to talk about this with you today. Yeah. Uh, the sound for me, uh, where I was, yeah. it was like a, a wave coming through. It was sound. for me, too. <laughs> okay, so so it, did it hit the wave hit you after it hit me? Yeah, it, yeah. So it flowed like that? It was. And bouncing around the room, it was Amazing. a trip. It was a it was a, it was surreal for me. Yeah, it was one of the most amazing experiences for me, and I've done a lot of gigs too. Yeah, but I, I was it was quite an honor for me and unforgettable. Awesome, huh? and to share it with you is bitch. Oh yeah. Uh, Shane's got his acoustic guitar here. Is there a story behind this, Martin? It's got a lot of people's name on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> I got to sign it once. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Well, you might have signed the other one because this one here, this is like a. There's been a couple of these, but this one here's been. You put yeah. it this way before you leave, you'll sign it again. No worries, dude. Yeah. Uh, Rod Wiggins, at uh, Hope Chapel, on Ninth Street and Pacific. Yeah. Heard that I needed a guitar, and I didn't have any instrument at all. He didn't know who I was, but he came down to find me. Yeah. And he handed me his Martin. Damn. Wow, dude, uh, Martin, dude. And he goes, I know, I've had this thing for 17 years. Yeah. He goes, I just know. God told me to do this and to give it to you because I think that you need something to help you say what you got to say. Bitching man. Was he right Respect or right? Him. Was he yeah. right? Respect him. That place over there where the old YWCA is? Where the old bowling alley Yeah, yeah. It used to be called Gay 90s Bowling Alley. Yeah. <laughs> old days, I swear. That yeah, was it was. I bowled there. Back when gay men remember. <laughs> no, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, Joe. I didn't mean to light you up on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Keep uh, it mature. Drop the quarter in the machine. Yeah. 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 Anyway, Brother Shane's going to play for us on this uh, gift. Yeah. Martin, and you've had a number of years now. A number and, of years. Uh, here live at the jungle here on Watford Peter, so bring it to us. All right. Let me get just get a little bit warmed up, make sure I got uh, everything going on here. Don't let me 